Do you remember the first time you rode a bicycle? I surely do. I was excited and got some great tips like just pedal and keep going. While I thought, shut up, I'm just barely able to hold on to the handlebars. But at least somebody was holding my hand. Being a self-taught programmer though is like trying to ride a bike but without training wheels or nobody holding your hand. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam. Today I want to share the most important tips I would tell myself 8 months ago when I was starting out with programming. Just to give you a little perspective, I started to be a self-taught programmer around 8 months ago as I said and at that time I had no idea what programming actually is. So I didn't have any clue what the difference is between this code and this code. For me it was really just colorful code on a screen. And I didn't really have any computer science background or anything like that, even though I was a designer, so let's say web designer, so let's say the internet and websites wasn't really a foreign concept to me. So I started out around eight months and these are the tips I, ha I would have for myself eight months ago. And we go from basic tips to advanced tips to some kind of weird tips. So let's start with the first one. So the first step is use a structured program to learn your selected language or your chosen language. So if you have your language chosen what you want to learn, then get a structured, let's say Udemy course or something in that fashion and don't just try to click through YouTube playlists to get your knowledge. It's very, very important to get your basics down in a structured way. It just makes things way, way easier than try to figure it out by yourself what you have to learn in which order. So a neglected skill what programmers have to have is being able to be, let's say, the god of Googling. So you have to be a very, very good Googler. So try uh, to find something on Google if you want to be a programmer because you're going to hit some issues you don't really have the answer for from your courses. And then you have to be able to Google yourself to solve the problem. And one of the things is you have to find out which keywords to use. One good example is, let's say you have an error on one element, it's pretty easy, you just Google this error. But if you have an uh, error on, let's say, three elements, then you, if you Google, let's say, element or error on three elements, maybe somebody had the error on five, six or seven elements and you won't get the result because you wrote the keyword three. So a very good keyword to know for such a case is, for example, multiple. And so you would say, Mult error on multiple elements and then usually you get the answer you're looking for and this is just one keyword or one, one example for one keyword so just keep in mind to learn keywords like this to be able to google yourself out of a difficult situation then no matter what language you chose if it's java javascript python whatever learn github and or git in itself with github and the terminal this is kind of globally for every programmer. Every programmer should use that. And I try to postpone learning GitHub and the terminal for a long time. And it's just better because you have to know that to do it in the beginning. And then all the other things that build on top of that are just way easier to come by. Then I think before you start out learning to program, you have to look into front-end versus back-end programmer. So there, if you don't know, there's these, let's say, two categories, front-end and back-end developer, and you, you have to figure out before you start actually learning to program to which one you lean more. Of course, if you're interested in programming in general, then that's great, like you're gonna be a full-stack programmer in the future, and that's very, very valuable skill to be. But in the beginning, try to figure out if you're more the backhand person or more the front end person. I will have a video about that soon, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. But this is just very, very important to try to figure that out before you start with anything else. And then after that, of course, you can find out which language you want to learn. If you're a backend developer, you have to figure out if it's Java, Python, PHP, whatever you want to do. There's a big variety. If you're more a front end developer, then it's easy. You just learn HTML, CSS and the real uh, programming language there is JavaScript. And one thing I would tell myself eight months ago, I heard many, many videos talk about, talking about it's not really too important which kind of language you learn because at the end of the day it's programming and it's pretty much the same. But I found out like now eight months into my programming, let's say career, um, I have no idea how a Java or a Python code looks like. 
because my primary programming language is JavaScript and I think at the beginning it's very very important to choose a good one. Of course it's a little bit hard to figure it out but I would take more time to figure out which programming language is for you instead of just jumping into one language you don't really like because then you could uh, end up getting disencouraged and just quit programming in general just because you maybe didn't like this specific type of language. So take time in the beginning to find your uh, favorite language. So these were my, let's say, basic tips for a programmer that just started out. Let's continue with the advanced ones. So one thing I think is, is very, very important is that you don't get too much into detail. So you don't have to think about everything you learn and have to, uh, to learn everything in detail that you learn, let's say, every little JavaScript uh, function or method or whatnot, try to learn with repetition. So the key in the beginning is trying to get on a level where you can have your own projects and then you just learn from there. You build project after project after project and then you will learn actually what's important to you, what's your style of code, instead of getting through all of those, let's say, courses that cover the basics, then you're super crazy proficient with the basics but you have no real implication of what programming looks like for you. So again, try to get yourself on a level where you are able to do projects and then just do whatever project that comes to mind to learn with that. Then another thing which I think is crazy good about being a programmer is ask questions. The community, the programmer community is just incredible. I've spent time in different communities like everybody else, like let's say you have a football team or a sports team you like or whatnot in that community, but I've never found a, a community as helpful as the programmer community. So go out there, ask questions in forums, ask questions to different people, which yeah, you can do as well. So if you have questions, ask them on the specific forums. So let's continue with some weird tips I have for you. One of the things I think is very, very important is to be lazy smart. So what do I mean by that? You have to start think uh, like a programmer. So you have to start think into the future. So let's say you, you program something, you always have to think about what happens if I want to change this element or that element? Does this take a long time to do or can I just um, change some variables and that's it? So you have to start think like a programmer and think to be, let's say, lazy smart, to think now what could be the future of this program. And you don't have to go overboard with that, but just in a kind of a balanced fashion, I have to think about if I want to change that, do I have to change a lot of things and spend a lot of time on that? Or could I do something now that will save me time in the long run? So I think that's very important to be what which I call lazy smart, think now, maybe do a little bit more now, so you don't have to go and refactor your code and do everything else that takes hours and hours. If you can spend now, let's say 30 minutes to refactor the code, so you won't have to refactor it at the end of the day for hours and hours. I hope this kind of makes sense. Then another thing is, we programmers usually are not famous to be good, let's say, with talking to people and being the sales kind of person. Um, but I think it's very, very important. If you're a, a programmer, a lot of times you're gonna go into mobile app development, game development, web development, and this has all to do with psychology of the user and psychology in kind of a sales environment. So try to add to your programmer knowledge also uh, psychology or kind of this marketing sales kind of uh, knowledge as well because at the end of the day we build programs for humans and it's very very important to understand what other humans like and what will work especially in kind of a sales mindset so this is just a thing that I would tell every, everybody that starts out as a programmer try to learn let's say a little bit of sales and marketing skills as well and then the last point, I think this is with not just program, but with everything you have to learn by yourself is if you don't live and breathe code, it might not be for you in the long run because you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna get frustrated, not just because coding is kind of a hard thing to learn in the beginning anyways, but also because it's just self-taught. So you're gonna hit a, a certain issue where you cannot just ask 
some kind of teacher to help you out with that. You have to go through different niche forums in the back of the internet to find some kind of uh, solution to your problem to then be able to keep going with your project or your course or where, wherever you are. So if you don't live and breathe what you actually are learning in this example programming, it's very, very hard to keep going and being persistent in your learning. So if you don't really, or if you're not really sure if programming is really the right thing for you and you're not sure if you're really passionate about that, programming might not be the thing for you that you should self-learn, let's say. What you could do is, of course, take a, a course on your, in your university, then you have a teacher or anything, but the self-taught programmer, I think you have to be quite passionate about what you're learning, otherwise it won't work for in the long run. So this was pretty much it. Let me know what you think are important facts for or important things for people that are uh, learning programming at the moment. And if you're a new programmer just starting out, if you have any questions, let them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. And yeah, hope to see you in the next video.